Welcome to Real Estate Real World, where we talk to the movers, shakers, and leaders that are getting it done right now in the real estate industry and beyond. I'm your host, Marguerite Crespillo, and I started this podcast simply dedicated to calling people about what's really happening in this crazy roller coaster ride of real estate. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and stay up to date on the newest stuff by adding yourself to the list at www.realestaterealworld.com. Now, let's dive into the world of real estate. Hello, it's Marguerite Crispillo, and it is time for Real Estate Real World, where we get to talk to all the cool people. And this gal we have today is absolutely no exception. I met her a couple years ago in the pool, I think, when we were at an event, and we instantly started connecting and chit-chatting about life and work and all that great stuff. And I really enjoyed her company. And so we've been trying to get her on this podcast because I know she has such a great story. So everybody, please welcome Deanne Dillard, a licensed agent since 2009. She began her real estate journey as a single mom at Starbucks, later moving to a new city where she achieved rookie of the year in her first year. Doubling her production in the second year, she consistently earned top selling and top listing agent awards. In 2019, tragedy struck with the loss of her daughter, prompting her to move to San Diego. Joining EXP in February of 2020 under Kyle Whistle, Deanne navigated lockdown challenges with EXP's support, rebuilding her career. She is now a certified mentor and coach, and she leads a local team in San Diego and a national downline at EXP. Welcome, welcome, my friend, Deanne. Hey, Marguerite. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Good. Is it a sunny, beautiful day in San Diego today? It actually is. I'm looking out my windows here at the palm trees, swaying a little bit, and it's probably 70 outside. Fantastic. Luckily, I'm in Northern California, and I'm only about an hour and a half, I guess, from Tahoe. But we have beautiful weather in the next couple of days, although it's projected to have crazy stuff next week. But that's okay. I'll take it. I know. We're fortunate. I was just talking to my son who lives down in San Diego down there. Yep. And we're in the middle of renovating his house because we had water issues, which is from all the crazy rains we just had. Yeah. What's funny is he had two incidents happen in the same week. He had a Mm -hmm. leak in his house that caused significant damage. We're having to gut the kitchen, master bathroom and all that. And then he took his car to go to the gym the day that they had the massive rains. Mm -hmm. And he thought he was going through a mud puddle and his car went whoop and sunk. (gasps) Oh my gosh. So, yeah. So thankfully, thank God, oh, there was a tow truck driver driving past who hooked the chain to his car wow, and pulled incredible. him out because there was water all the way to the windows. It was scary. That and is pulled him scary. out. That's crazy. Yeah. Thank God like, someone was watching out for him. Uh, yeah. The tow truck driver pulled him out. And of course, they totaled his car because all the electronics in cars now, when they yeah. flood, there's like, yeah. yeah. It was crazy. So yeah, yeah, he's like major adulting right now. (laughs) (laughs) And not because he wants to. No, no. He's like, mom, oh my gosh, how do you deal with all this stuff? I said, welcome to adulthood. Yeah, that's what we do. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, we get paid in direct proportion to our ability to figure shit out, right? True. So tell me this. So you got into real estate in 2009. What actually made you go down that path? My grandpa was in real estate and I was always fascinated with that. And I had asked him when I was in my twenties, like about getting into real estate. He was actually, I have, uh, he passed away, but I have a plaque here that says he was a realtor of the year in, in 1977. Oh, yeah. Wow. Too. But he was like, don't do it. It's too hard. It's too much work and you don't want to get into that. So I didn't, but when I, back in 2008, I ended up going through a divorce and I had four kids and I was a stay-at-home mom. And I had a friend who said, you should get into real estate. And all you got to do is just put your picture on a sign and you'll do fine. And he was a, a mortgage broker. So he was like, we'll work together. It'll be great. And I was like, you know what? This is a sign. I need to do this. I actually reached out to him recently and thanked him for that. Cause we had disconnected after a few years, but I was like, Hey, thanks for saying that. Cause that's 
the reason I did it. And I didn't know what to do. So I had gotten a part-time job at Starbucks. And actually they asked me to be the manager there after just a week, but that's why I was getting my real estate license. Cause I didn't know how I was going to support my kids. Yeah. And I did a lot of that on my own, but it's been an amazing career. I was able to put all four of my girls through college as a, a single mom selling real estate. That's amazing. That's actually one thing that I love about real estate so much is that you have the freedom. You could be as successful as you want to be right now, you know? Yeah. And the truth is today we're recording today, which this won't air today, but we're recording today where it's International Women's Day. Yes, right? I know. That's fantastic. And I love that. I'm like, I need to interview a lot more women, but that's fun. I love how real estate has given that opportunity to someone like you who was an at-home mom. And maybe, yeah. I don't know, did you have a whole lot of work experience prior to being an at-home mom? I had, when I was 18, I had a real person's job. I didn't go to college. I ended up going to a trade school, uh, but I, I actually dropped out of high school. And then I ended up going to trade school and becoming the Valley Victorian of, the, of that. But then I just went to work for the county. Yeah. My parents had worked for the county. I went and got a real job for the county. But after I was having all these babies, I just, I couldn't do it all. So I ended up staying at home. And it had, so it had been a long span before I had worked. That's amazing. And so you've now been in real estate since 2009 and you had been, at a, had you been at a few different companies before EXP or? I had, yeah. I started at independent brokerage and honestly, I didn't know what I was doing whatsoever. <laughs> and they were the number one in the area. But at that time, there was no mentorship or training or coaching. I didn't know anything. I had a, a really nice gentleman who helped me learn how to write contracts. And he's like, write a letter and send it out to people like a farm. I was farming land. And, and that's about all the help I got. So I Googled my way through how to do this thing. I was cool. YouTubing. <laughs> and interestingly enough, you started like literally at the bottom of the market. Like yeah, I didn't even know market in history. You started yeah. in the worst market in history, which honestly, I feel like the people who did start during that time actually learned how to work, right? Yeah. Like you had to hustle, you had to figure it out. You had to exactly. do things differently because it wasn't like this insanity market we had over the last few years where all you had to do was blink and you had transactions. Like you really had to, you had to figure stuff out. 100%. And I feel fortunate for that because I didn't know it was a bad market. I didn't even realize what was going on because I was so new. I was like, this is how it is. And if I would have gone in, it would have been like this super easy thing. It, you know, you don't survive. You don't have all that experience having to work really hard. It's just handed to you. I sold 12 houses that first year. I thought I can sell one a month. That shouldn't be too hard. And I didn't realize at the time that was really good for what was going on at the time. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because I think a lot of these people over the last few years, they don't have any concept of what it's like. And I've said this many times on my show. I say we right now have an entire generation of real estate agents and frankly, consumers who for the last 14 years have not seen a challenging market or a down market. So you could say I've been in business 10 years, but you still have never lived through the challenging times, the, the, the times where you really have to figure stuff out and you really have to hustle. So I know that we're seeing a big exodus of agents leaving the market. And a lot of those are ones who never learned the basics, right? Yes. So what are some of those basics that you have done and that you do now to build and grow your business? It's funny you ask that because I talk to agents every day, a lot of them, and I have a lot of newer agents in my organization and they're struggling right now. It, this is a very difficult time again. And there's so many new people and they're like, wow, it, it, this is really hard. Yeah, it really is. But if you can establish a business right now, and stick it out, you're going to be golden in a year or so when things turn around. But now you have to get in there and build a foundation, right? You can't just go and, and say, I have all these buyers and I'm going to go write all these offers like they were two years ago. They have to build a business and not just be a real estate agent. Or something. Yeah. 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 They have to treat it like a business, like they're an entrepreneur, establish the foundations of what it looks like to build a business. How am I going to get clients? How I have to be super consistent with my follow-up and know, have a strategy and a system put together for your buyers and your sellers. I think people were just winging it for so long and you just can't do that anymore. 
For sure. I think back because I've been doing this, like who is it? Glenda Baker says since Jesus was a baby. 30 years. <laughs> but, but, but I think back when I first started in real estate and back then we had HUD homes we could sell. They had a program yeah. out there where you could buy a home for $500 down, HUD homes. Yeah. Back then we didn't have the internet and the computers and all that kind of stuff. And we used to literally get a faxed list every three weeks. And we would take that faxed list and we would cut it all up, put it on paper and copy it. And yeah. I'm laughing because yesterday, because we're dealing with all this stuff with our San Diego house right now and the insurance. And I had to call the mortgage lender because I have to send them the insurance checks or whatever. She goes, well, you can fax us the letter. I go, fax? Like, who has a fax machine? <laughs> I go, do you guys seriously have a fax machine? Like, a, she goes, yes, that's why. I go, you have an outbound fax machine? Like, you literally put something on a machine and fax it to somebody? <laughs> How are you supposed to fax? Like, where do you go to like, the fax machine? I, I don't know. I guess it. UPS stores or FedEx yeah, or something somewhere like, like that, that, right? Has to have but I'm like, fax system. <laughs> I'm like, who has a fax? But did, so you, that's, did you give them your pager number? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny to me is how things have changed so dramatically in the last 30 years. Back then, we figured out how to get these HUD lists out to people and how yeah. to sell homes to people without all the internet and that's yeah. going on. So Everything is figure outable. Marie Forleo said that. Yeah. yeah, I love that quote. She did a whole book yeah. on that called Everything is Figure Outable. That's right. And it's fascinating to me how people just get paralyzed. They get stuck. They're like, yes. I don't know what to do. I'm like, number one, get out of your house, <laughs> get out of your pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> like, I even actually have pants on today because I'm leaving. I do too. I do too. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have just pajamas on. <laughs> yeah. So what are some things that you're doing right now to get business? I'm so glad you asked that because going back to what you're saying about everything being figure outable is what I tell my agents is you have to learn to pivot all the time because we have no idea what is gonna happen in the market. And, and I've seen that over the last 15 years, and you've seen it over 30, right? Like fax machines, like everything is changing right. all the time. So I built my business on farming and open houses and just being the community neighborhood first and moment when I moved markets and started all over, um, COVID happened and I had to pivot big time. I couldn't meet people, I didn't know anybody. So I started to do some community stuff and get known in the community, but it was so slow. But because we are at EXP and we have this great collaboration, I started to build out agent relationships and uh, build a group of people supporting each other with agent to agent referrals. Right. So yeah. that really sustained me in my, like in my second year at EXP, I made more money than I ever made in the 10 years previously just through establishing agent to agent referrals. So that's a huge part of my business right now is agents all over the country because move up and move down buyers isn't happening here. I live in a vacation town and no one wants to sell their $2 million house and go and buy something else when they have a 2% mortgage. Exactly. So, but the move out and move in California people is still hot. Like that, there, that happens every day. So I had to figure out what was a new thing that I could do that I hadn't done in the past to keep my business going. And so it just happened to be the referrals that have, have been working for me since I've been here at EXP. So what caused you to relocate and what brought you to EXP? So back in 2019, I had always wanted to move to the coast and I was in the desert and it was not the nice desert, <laughs> but I had a great business there. I, I had become number one of my, and my daughter passed away. So in November 23rd, 2019, she was in a car accident in Palm Springs and uh, she was coming to visit myself and my other daughters for one of my daughter's birthday. Yeah, it was her birthday. And she had just texted me before that, that she would be there in a few minutes. And I had kept looking at her location and she wasn't moving. Then I got a call from the hospital that she had been in a car accident she was on her phone. So if anybody um, has kids that get on their phone, it's, it's a huge warning, but um, she rolled and then um, she was on life support uh, for about a week. And then she passed away December 1st. And, um, and we had always wanted to move to the coast and my younger daughter finishes high school. We'll think about moving. And my younger daughter never went back to school after her sister passed away. 
and it was just too hard for her to go back. They were really popular girls. Everybody knew them and she just couldn't face going back and talking to everybody. So they actually let her graduate because she had enough credits and everything. And they're very compassionate, but it was just too hard for us to be there. And yeah, yeah it really was. And, and I'm like, well, we're moving. We're going to do that move that we always wanted to. And I didn't figure out like how I was going to start over, but I'm like, Hey, I'm a business person. I can do that. I literally left 28 listings when I left that company. And so I moved to San Diego and I was searching out who's the number one here. Who do I want to partner with? I don't know this market and I just need to get with somebody who I can really plug into. And I did my research and I found Kyle Whistle was here and I had saw him speak at a Tom Ferry event um, a couple of years earlier. And I thought, if I ever get to San Diego, I'm going to reach out to that guy. And so I did. And he was of course very welcome and very helpful. I'll support you. And I joined the XP. I didn't really understand the whole thing. I just saw a lot of people moving there. And this was like four years ago, but what he had shared with me about the collaboration and helping me build a new business is, is why I moved. First, uh, let me say how incredibly sorry I am about your daughter. And we've talked at, at length yeah. about that and I'm grateful that we've been able to have that connection. You know, yeah. so that suddenly passed away at 10, but a little different circumstances, but it, there's no part of it ever changes or is, or is ever easy, right? Like yeah. everyone thinks that, you know, someday you'll get over it or something that yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think you that's true. You never get over it. You just, you're always going to be different. You just learn. You learn a new normal, right? Yeah, you learn a new normal, exactly. Yeah. So I wanted to, to say that, but the second thing is Kyle is extraordinary. He's a great mentor and great guy. Yeah. And so I've been here now to EXP eight years. So it's hard to wow. believe how much time has flown. It's really crazy. So in your four years since you've been here, you've now put started to focus some energy on building a tribe and building an organization mm -hmm. within EXP. And how has EXP helped you? How has that changed your life? Because the crazy thing to me that I hear, and I only hear it with EXP, is how EXP has changed people's lives. I don't hear that about other companies. So what are your thoughts on that? It's hundred percent changed my life and I, I don't ever say never, but I'll never leave <laughs> because yeah. of what this company has done for me and what it's still doing for me. But it's just changed my whole uh, look at, at real estate. And like I said, the number one reason I joined the company was because of the collaboration. And I had been at several companies before and I've never, ever had the help that I've had at, at any other company because if previously you, you meet friends and you have an office camaraderie and all of that, but nobody wants to give you their secrets and nobody wants to give you their time. You are their competition. No matter if they're your best friend in that company, you're their competition. So they don't want to give you their secrets and it takes time and there's no incentive for them to give you your time. Right. So it's just a lot different culture. I have friends like you, right. And I have friends on the East coast all over the country who I are my really good friends at this company that I can pick up the phone and call them and say, I'm having this issue. What do you think I should do? And they'll take the time to help me, whether they're in my group organization or not. Yeah. So that support that I've had here is like none other. So it takes you from just going into business and, and trying to figure it out to fast forwarding, to skyrocketing as fast as you want to go, because everybody's already giving you the playbook. They're yeah. already yeah. handing you all the answers here. Take everything I've already worked hard to figure out and do it, just do exactly what I did. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's number one. And number two, the revenue share in the stock is changing my life and my family's life. And uh, because of, of going through losing a child, like my why is to always be able to support my kids, whatever that looks like. One of my daughters is licensed and they're very much involved in what I do. So they see how hard I'm working. I'm like, this is for us. This is for all of us. This is for our legacy. And they'll be able to reap the benefits of what I'm doing today for the rest of their life. So that's my huge why, and I don't see that being uh, an opportunity anywhere else, but this company. I love that aspect of it because for me as well, uh, having lost a son at a young age, mm -hmm. 
it becomes even more important that you create and leave a legacy for your children that are still here on earth and be able to help support them. And I also love the collaboration within this company and the ability to reach out and talk to anybody. Like this morning, I was on a Zoom call with Tina Call and another mm -hmm. like 60 other women. Have you gotten the book Worthy yet? I am in the middle of reading it. So good. And I love Tina. She's a friend of mine that I connect with at events that lives, you know, on the other side. You of the should country. get in that book club. She has a book club and we oh, meet every yeah. Friday at 7 a.m. I'll send you the link. Okay. You can join in. And it, it's early for us because it's the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be on the call at 7 a.m., I'm definitely going to be in my pajamas. So I'm That's not right. doing video. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was great to be on that call with mm -hmm. women all around the world. And there were a couple guys on there too. And really listening to what they're working on and where things are going. And I just love that. Like I would have, I don't know that I would have had that opportunity somewhere else. Maybe, I guess there's other companies out there that do, but not to the level that I've seen. Me either. Like you just mentioned Tina and we've only connected at events, but it's like my long lost sister, right? And we have these relationships with people everywhere in all these states, right? And it's, they're like your family. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next for you? What are you working on the most right now with EXP and just in your life? I'm hugely focused on building out my organization um, with other agents. And I just have a great passion for that. It's actually becoming more on the forefront than my production, because although the production pays the basic bills, it's so rewarding. I talk to agents all day, every day. And to be able to coach them through whatever it is their goals are, whatever coaching to what they want to do and being able to see the blind spots like that, because I've been doing this for so long and say, you should do these things and see them like light bulb go off. Go, oh my gosh, no one's ever told, it, told me this before. I've been struggling. And now I'm with someone who's going to take the time to help me and to help me reach my goals in the production that I want to be in. So that's been huge for me. That is where I spend a lot of my time is sharing the opportunity with agents and just looking for those who are looking for an opportunity. And we're in an accountability group, right? Yes. Which is a, a lot of fun. And I love being in that group because I love to see the successes of others and the collaboration and kind of the back and forth on what is working, what's not working. Yes. And it, what I love about that accountability group is none of us are really in each other's organizations. Some of us are, some aren't, but most of them are not in the same organization, but they're all willing to help and grow because we all benefit as a company when we do that. It's a different vibe, right? Have you ever been involved in something prior where everybody wants to help you and they're not holding back, even though they're not actually incentivized? It's just if the company wins, we all win. I mean, we're all owners in the company and yeah. it's just an amazing thing. And, and I love that group so much. Yeah, I do too. As we wrap up today, any final thoughts, anything you want to chat about else before we wrap up? I'm just really thankful that we met in the pool in, <laughs> in Vegas, I think. I think it was Vegas. Yeah. And yeah. I, I definitely need another pool weekend. So I'm, I'm actually trying to get down to San Diego in the next month or so, because I need to go down and see what my son is doing to the house in San Diego. Well, but here, let me know because we definitely need to have a, have a date. Yes. I definitely want to do that. I'm trying. My only dilemma, you laugh and people on air can laugh at me or not send me comments, hate or whatever. I have electric Hummer. And so the dilemma is it's a nine hour drive from where I okay. live to San Diego. And I would love to just fly down, except my son is like begging me to bring the Hummer down so we can oh take it, you know, drive it around. And I said, okay, but I got to figure out where I can charge it. <laughs> right. <laughs> where I can find a supercharger so I can stop along the way. It's really like, uh, you have to plan that trip pretty detailed, right? Exactly. I can't just hop off and go. So I know that my other son is coming down uh, the end of March because they're, my, so both my boys are DJs. I think we talked about this before. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But both my boys are DJs. And so they're doing a show, I think March 22nd or 23rd or something like that. They're doing a show down there. And so oh. I wanted to go down for that, but they're also, it's the EDM music, which is really loud and headbanger. So yeah, I, I know all about it. it. 
I'm not sure I want to actually go to the show. I go, can I, I'm going to have to get really good headphones. You can go for a minute. You can go for a little yeah. bit. And see yeah. if there. I was there. Yeah. yeah. But I'll be coming down in the next month or so. I'll be great. Yeah. After, so. yeah, I'm just really thankful to connect here. And then we connected in Vegas. And then we keep connecting in these other groups. And then and, and it's just like a big family that I'm just really meant to be. For. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and love your story. And I look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Thanks, Marguerite. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Real Estate Real World, where we get to talk to all the cool people. We're available on all your podcast apps and everything else, YouTube and all that. Be sure to follow and share and subscribe. And if you are so kind to give us a five-star review, we would love that too. Helps boost us up there in the uh, algorithms, I guess, all the fancy words of today's uh, social media, right? So thank you again for joining us on Real Estate Real World. Go out and make it an amazing day. Thank you for joining us today on Real Estate Real World, where we talk with masters and leaders in the real estate industry and beyond on how we can raise the bar in our industry. Please subscribe over on iTunes. And while you're there, be sure to give us a review. Your reviews encourage us and help others to find our podcast for show notes and hot topics on what's going on right now in our real estate industry. Also hop on over to www.realestaterealworld.com and add your name to our email to get early advance notice of upcoming podcasts. Thanks again for listening and go out there and be a part of the elite masterclass and raising the bar on the real estate industry.